So now let's get into a case and let me demonstrate step by step how I use prototype bonding to manage what I consider to be a highly complex case. Sam is a patient of mine I treated several years ago. Sam was referred from his sister and Sam comes to me because he's looking to restore the lower anterior teeth. He doesn't like the way that the teeth are worn and he doesn't like the discoloration. You can see that Sam has these um, unesthetic uh, maxillary anterior crowns um, that at this time he's not gonna allow me to change out. I have to manage his case, leaving those crowns as they are. You look at the intense staining on Sam's teeth and you see the effect of tetracycline stained teeth. Um, Sam grew up and his mother, thinking that she was doing, doing her children a favor, uh, had the patient, had her children prophylactically taking tetracycline to sort of ward off infection. And you can see the severity of the staining that Sam has with his teeth. So Sam presents to me and he had come for a second opinion. The, uh, the first opinion I had gotten from a dentist was to do intentional endodontic treatment or root canals on the anterior teeth place posts and cores, and then do crowns on the teeth. So in reviewing Sam's treatment, I told Sam, I think that we may have some alternative options that might be a little bit more conservative, and I'd like to see if we can make it a little bit more predictable. So in the retracted view, you can see that there's very little tooth structure, especially for the lower anteriors. Now, I want you to take a look at the posterior segments, and you'll see from the buccal cusp of the, uh, the posterior molars and the bicuspid, there's very little wear on that second bicuspid in the molar, but there's significant wear on those lower anteriors. Now, is this related to those factors that we talked about? Was it, is it related to psychogenic stress? Is it related to a bite issue? Is there a functional bite issue that has, that's related to the shape, the lingual shape of those maxillary anterior crowns, you know, most likely? Or is there a relationship to some sort of airway or obstruction issue going on? So that's what's sort of going through my head as we're looking at Sam's case, that there's wear on the anteriors, but not so much wear on the posteriors. If we look at Sam's occlusion, you can see he has a very deep bite. He has 100% over, um, over jet. When you look at the, how, when he, when he closes, that the maxillary anterior teeth are completely over the uh, lower anteriors. If you look from the occlusal view, you can see the significant wear on the anterior teeth. Again, is this from a constructed, constricted envelope of function because of the shape of the lingual surfaces of the, of the anterior crowns? Um, we look at the posterior teeth. Uh, so there's a crown on the lower right molar, but if you look at that second uh, premolar, there's very little wear on the occlusal surface there or on the buccal cusp. And if you look at the buccal cusp of the right, uh, the lower left uh, bicuspid, second bicuspid, and the molar, essentially no wear at all on those teeth. So we mount uh, Sam's case, we take uh, we take alginates, we pour up the alginates, and with our study casts, using a face bow, we mount on a SAM-3 articulator, and then using a bite registration, we're able to bring the uh, uh, lower cast to the upper cast, and this is his occlusal setting on the SAM-3 articulator. And you can see on the solid models that it looks similar to what we saw in the clinical photographs. There's a 100% overlap of those um, ant maxillary anteriors over the lower anteriors. But I want you, again, to pay attention to the posterior segment and you'll notice that there's very little wear on those posterior buccal cusps. And if we would measure the distance between those, uh, the gingival margins on those posteriors, it's within sort of a normal range on what we would expect for a vertical dimension. So the question in Sam's case is, has he lost vertical dimension? Well, that's not really the question as we talked about. To me, it doesn't really matter if he's lost vertical dimension. What's the real issue? The real issue is, do we need to gain restorative space? So where do we start? We start with the end in mind is, where do we go to gain restorative space? Because my goal is, I want to be able to recreate natural looking central incis incisors for Sam. I wanna create naturally looking lateral incisors and canine. I wanna get a, um, ideal tooth proportion and length for these teeth. And so that's where I'm starting in my mind is, not worrying if he's lost vertical dimension, but how am I gonna gain restorative space so that I can create naturally looking teeth for Sam?